rahman rahim I like talking uh, about the clinical part of the uh, central line insertion the practical approach before i will start i just go with the overview the objective of my talk uh, we will understand together the indication and the contraindication of central line insertions and we review the techniques and different types and when we can use different types of the lines and the factor which can affect the selection of the central venous catheter insertions, some clinical challenges during insertions, and we'll go by the end with the complication which might happen during insertion central line. So my part will be the practical view. Let me start with the history of the central line. What does mean of central line? Means you have a large or central cath inserted in the big veins close to the heart. Whatever, whatever the, it is uh, peripherally inserted or centrally inserted, but when, whenever it's closed to the heart, it's called central line or CVL. It first described by uh, uh, Professor Obniak, which is cannulated the soldier during the battlefields, the start to have. After that, in 1953, all of us know cell danger technique. Cell danger, it is a Swedish radiologist. The first one, started to have to describe the catheter over needle access to the blood vessels in 1953. The description of the catheter itself. We have different types, like central line, like peripheral line, like introducer sheath, like tunneled or non-tunneled, like big uh, uh, HD catheter. All these are the types will come through it one by one. The size, the diameter of each catheter, between seven French, eight French, 11 French, for HD catheter height, the length, 15 centimeters to 16 to 30 centimeters, the lumens, either single lumen, double lumen, or treble or quadruple lumens. What is the material of the catheter, which is mostly polyethylene uh, and uh, or silicon? We have a specific, uh, a specialized catheter like coated with antibiotics or heparin. This is one for certain situations. I will go through it briefly and simply. All of us know the peripheral line, which is inserted in the peripheral veins by any cannula, whatever the size of it. The second one, just to show you the central line itself, as you can see it here, this is one from the triple lumen catheter, seven French, 16 centimeters, there's a typical catheter, HG considering also one from the central venous catheter. The big line, what's the big line, which is commonly used nowadays, it is peripherally inserted central cath. You can see it inserted in the forearm, in the basilic or cephalic veins ultrasound they guide it here away from the central but the tip reaching to the uh, near to the heart so considering central but peripherally inserted so we called it big cath we can use introducer to insert certain devices like pacing or like balmonary catheter it's also considering as a catheter type She's introducers. If we go to the tunnel, all of this untunneled. Untunneled means there is no a part of the catheter under the skin. Tunneled central cath, it is, we have a specific part, certain part under the skin, which keep it almost, keep it for longer time. So tunnel usually used for longer time. And port cath, if we are using more Caster for longer time, like patient with chemotherapy, like patient who is requiring like year of the central line insertion, they can use portacath. As you can see it here, the hub, it is under the skin. You can have one hub or two hub. You can use it for the uh, injection of uh, uh, some drugs, right? So this is the catheter type. How we can select the axis? How we can select the catheter, right? I do like actually this algorithm by Mills Peninsula Health Services, giving us clue how you select the catheter with certain uh, characteristics. For example, if you would like to trans trans transfuse certain medications, for example, the characteristics of that, if you see it, or for how long you, you want to use the catheter, or do you, get, you have available peripheral light or not, use it therapeutic or diagnostic, and for the kidney patients, need a specific uh, consideration. For example, if you are planning to transfuse hypoosmolar like drugs, if you are like transfusing, for example, you can see it here, uh, uh, you don't need central line. Central access not required for the because 10% or less. For isotonic sedation, you don't need it. For osmolarity low, you don't need it. But for the uh, medications or infusates, which you need higher 
osmolarity, higher concentration of the glucose, right? Different extremes of the pH uh, changing, right? Those needs some sort of the central line. The second factor, which is duration of therapy. For example, if you are going for uh, a duration of less than two weeks, we have got access for the central line, for the peripheral case, you can go with peripheral line or CVC or PIC line. If you have poor access, which means poor access for the peripheral inserted venous catheter, you can go at that time for PIC or which is peripheral inserted central case or central venous case. But, but if the duration is more reaching for a month, for example, it's better to use PIC line or central venous case. There is no place here for the peripheral line. If you want more, like three, three months, you can shift it to tunneled sub tunnel case. If you want more, you can shift it to the board to case. So based on the durations, you can decide it which case you have to use it. Diagnostic, of course, you need to go for the CT. You need large, good peripheral lines. Sometimes you need to adjust the injectable. For example, the, the BE study, the contrast, you need to adjust the timing to insert. You can need central line or you need the peripheral lines. Or monitoring. For some situations, you need central line to measuring the central venous gas or measuring pressure or measuring the central venous oxygen saturation in some situation. Kidney patient, if you have a kidney patient, chronic kidney disease or dialysis, you need to consult actually the uh, vascular surgeon or the nephrologist before inserting because their, their vessels are very precious. You don't need to break it and you want to use it later on for the bermic gas or they want to use it actually for the, so you need to consult them. So indications, Clear indications, either administration of the drugs or nutritional, if you monitoring hemodynamically or poor peripheral venous axis, sometimes you need central line or, for example, plasmapheresis or dialysis, provide health sheets, you can insert it for the uh, uh, basing or for the uh, pulmonary artery catheter insertion. These are the indications. Contraindication, when you will not insert central gas, there is no absolute contraindication. I think so. If you go through contraindication, there is no absolute, but there is relative contraindications. For example, coagulopathy, INR, uh, INR more than 1.5, 1.5, or BTT uh, higher, or thrombocytopenia more than less than 50, or you have infected area uh, overlying target veins, area of the infection, contraindication, or anatomic disruptions, or fracture of the clavicle for the uh, subclavian vein, or you have thrombosis. For example, for the patient with endostigial disease, always you have some thrombosis in the veins, so contraindicate to insert the line in there. Keep in your mind, search for the expert. For the patient who have complicated or stable patients, better to search for the expert to insert the uh, central case. Site of insertion. The most common site of insertion for central line, either internal jugular or subclavian or femoral veins. Of course, the, the easiest or the access direct path for the right atrium through the right internal jugular vein and the left subclavian vein. Let us have what is the pros and the cons of insertion of each line. For example, for internal jugular, the good thing, minimal risk of pneumothorax, especially if you use for internal jugular vein, uh, the good issue of the advantage, easy to be inserted with the ultrasounds, minimal risk of pneumothorax, Procedure table bleeding, it is you can compress the bone. If you have bleeding, you can compress the puncture site and lower failure rate, especially for the beginners. It can be used especially and very excellent target when you're using the ultrasound guided. But what is the advantage of the internal jugular vein? It's not ideal for prolonged access, risk of carotid artery injury, risk of carotid uh, arterial injury, uncomfortable for the patient to move his neck. Uh, dressing is difficult. Sometimes the nurse had fi find difficult to fix it. Of course, with the left side, you can have injury for thoracic duct. And in general, jugular, if the patient hypovolemia, it could be collapsed. It was not easily to be detected, right? And of course, uh, potential access and the maintenance issues with uh, concomitant tracheostomy, for example, it will be difficult to have. So this is the cons, which is against the internal jugular. If you go to subclavian, the good thing with subclavian, easy to maintain dressings. Very straightforward skin, you can make the dressing easily and the more comfortable for the patients, you can move his neck easily and better landmark, especially in obese patients. Obese patients in general will be difficult because the landmark would be difficult and accessible when airway control is being established, like tracheostomy. But the disadvantage of subclavian or the difficulty of subclavian is high risk of pneumothorax. It's not 
compressible. If you are bleeding, you cannot control it. And especially in, in, in not expert people, success rate, the uh, failure rate is high, a little. And catheter malposition more common, especially with right uh, subclavian vein. And of course, with chest compression will be some interaction with the chest compression. The femoral, rapid access, for that we can find most ER patients, they are using it, a femoral line, especially for the patient is unstable, inserting femoral line to be easy, doesn't, uh, doesn't interfere with the CBR, doesn't interfere with the intubation, no risk of pneumothorax, and they don't need to position the patient to insert it. But the disadvantage or the difficulty with the femoral line is delayed circulation during CBR, it is long journey to reach the drugs to the heart, and the most common one, you are not dealing with the clean area, so infection rate will be high and difficult to keep sites trial to prevent the patient mobilization and decrease the risk of the thrombosis in that one. So this is the advantage, the advantage or pros and the cons of HGF lines. Site selection consideration. You have to consider, for example, a certain situation. If you have a scar, if the patient was AV fustula, if you have, uh, for example, pneumothorax, it's better to insert in the site of the pneumothorax, not the other side. For hemodialysis catheter, it's better to avoid the subclavian for the uh, decreasing risk of stenosis or thrombosis. And of course, if you have the patient with TBI, the central line for internal jugular can minimize the drainage of the uh, brain flow. So it's better to avoid it in some situations. See some clinical selection. Preparation for insertion, how we can do some, I will go through it very fast because it is not a workshop, but we need to have review the lab, do imaging, check the best site, select the best site. Of course, you have to use ultrasound to confirm the visit before you will go, obtain consent, position the patient, connect him to the monitor, and of course, time out for uh, decreasing the errors. Then start to identify the vein again with ultrasound after cleaning, after stabilization. Of course, the, the infection control precautions would be uh, extensively uh, explained by my guest, my, my, my colleagues in the, in the course. Uh, I, will, I will highlight only the critical, practical part of the uh, central line insertions. You can do give some anesthesia, cylindrical technique, aspirate venous blood, and don't forget, remove needle. Don't let the guide wire go inside and of course, use some scalp to just dilate the skin before you are going with the dilator, then remove the dilator and insert. Uh, push the caster over the guide wire, right? You can have some estimation for the length to know you are in, close to the proper side or not. The tip, like internal jugular vein, for example, 15 centimeter, subclavian 15 centimeter, femoral 20. Of course, remove the wire and the aspirate, but the blood. No, yeah, you can just take VBG to check you are a proper site or not after you finish. Of course, certain situation you need to insert to do like subclavian or internal jugular X-ray. Very essential to do X-ray after. Very essential to uh, don't use it unless done X-ray uh, to for proper size for the tip of the. You can see it here the central line. The tip just close to carina, right? In the uh, tip to carina distance, you can use the landmark the uh, internal general subclavian tip to be in the proper position and of course to allow you for evaluation of the pneumothorax by the chest x-ray. Very, very important, two very important provocations for the safety practice. First one, use real-time ultrasound guidance during CVC insertion. It can improve the attempt of the success of the uh, central insertion. The second one, maximum trial barrier while placing CVC to prevent the infection. Don't forget, this is the two cornerstone for the safety practice for the, to avoid the eclipse and to have a success rate for that, right? Of course, ultrasound guided by all teachers, it shows success rate would be higher, especially with the first attempt and less complications. The drawbacks of ultrasound, it was earlier, which is time consuming, and unfamiliarity with the most of the trainees, but now became standard of care for the patient, for the ICU patients. You have to use it for most of the procedures. Some period, some, some consideration you have to consider it, like chest X-ray has to be done immediately after subclavian or internal jugular. Be sure you can take blood and check the BBG. If internal jugular attempt is unsuccessful, don't use it the same site, change for the other site, not to have both uh, ipsilateral subclavian, don't go to the other side. If you have a complication for the right side, don't go to the left. If you have a pneumothorax for the right, maybe don't go to the left. The patient will be almost uh, clinically uh, unstable. Never, never let the guide wire going in. We have many incidents. 
for guide wire moving with the with the thumb of the trainees, especially younger. Never force the wire on insertion. Always press your finger uh, for the tip hub for allow no bleeding, allow confirm replacement for ultrasound. A venous blood could be checked at the end. Collapse prevention, of course, this is the three days of the focusing on either insertion or maintenance or removal of the central line. All my colleagues will in depth go with the collapse prevention. But I just, Dr. Ayman, he mentioned the risk factor for the collapse as a generally, I will just highlight on the few of them, collapse factors, risk factor into the patients, like, like immunocompromised patient, skin burn or prolonged hostile stay, like provider, the, uh, uh, the doctor himself is doing, of course, in emergency will increase the collapse rate, excessive manipulation will increase, incomplete adherence with precautions, unnecessary device or lack of the catheter. For the third items for the risk factor, which is the device itself, select the proper site, be away from the femoral as much as you can, select the least number of the limb when you want to use it, and don't insert without indication and necessity. This is the bundles, it will be explained in details. Complications. We have immediate complications like bleeding, arterial puncture, arrhythmia, hemothorax, air impulse, thoracic duct injury in the left side, or catheter uh, malpositions. Right? So we can have this is the immediate complication. Of course, keep in your mind mechanical complications and the immediate complications higher six times for those who's not experts. The practitioner who insert this is the study that is done less than 50 central line he can have six times higher uh, uh, complications mechanical during insertion rather than the one who's expert who is inserting more than 50 uh, central care. So need practice, education, and training, and put it in the experiment, especially for the patient who's unstable hemodynamically. The rate of complication, of course, infection, thrombosis, catheter migration, mobilization, or nerve injury in some situation. Don't forget here, you can see it one from the most important complication infection rate, 15.3 higher with the femoral vein, vein rather than subclavian at the jugular. And usually, remember the complication to collect consent and to take your precautions during insertion of the lines. So, I have one MCQ here. Any uh, one from the MCQ will find it in your test, either pre or post test. Let us have your answer. I will go through the scenario briefly. We have a woman, COBD. She came to the ICU type 2 respiratory failure, intubated, left subclavian inserted. Over the next week, one week after multiple attempts to place, difficult to have peripheral line. So they kept the central line. Uh, CBEF failed, patient in uh, 2016, she was febrile, she was accepted, heart rate is a little bit high. On examination, the central venous line site exercise is clear. There is no erythema, no discharge, no tenderness. WBCs was high. Of course, she started here on vancomycin and cefibim. After two days, blood culture from the distal port came for central line and the peripheral side grows single coagulose negative step in both potents. Other cultures shows no growth. Her fever resolves the cosmetic count return to normal and she remains stable. So the patient now is stable, no fever, and she has central line. So, which of the following is the next best step after discontinuing CFB? Because she has coagulation steps, so we kept him on vancomycin. And uh, which one? Keep central line and continue vancomycin. Remove central line and stop vancomycin. Remove central line and continue vancomycin. Keep central line and stop vancomycin. You can just answer in the chat. I can see some answers. C, B, central line C, B, yes, C, A, Marwa. I'm waiting for the reply. I, I can have now a lot of A, C. So I can see most of you between C and D, e, and if you going with the A. All of you agree for more central line? Okay. It is a little bit tricky. Yes, Dr. Abir. Thank you so much. Yes, Dr. Rehab. Uh, now we start to have a answer. Yes, I can stop that. Let us have the answer. Yes. In this situation, we can keep central line. 
right? The patient difficult to access for the referral line. The patient controlled now and keep in your mind the coagulation of negative staff isolated from both. Let us, this, this question to take us for the removal of the central line. Of course, all of us, I'm working in many ICUs, right? Most of the ICUs, they are reluctant to remove central line, right? They are really reluctant to remove central line. But keep in your mind this message. Whenever you have catheter-related blood stream infections, it can alarming and it can give you clue to think a lot to remove central line. So how we can remove central line or when we can remove central line? Let us have this scheme from Cleveland. I do like it a lot. Simply check your patients. If you have complicated patient like unstable hemodynamic, endocarditis, endosalmitis, osteomyelitis, active malignancy, or persistent blood stream infection, those are the complicated patients. Simply, if you have any of those, remove the line and give the treatment four to eight weeks because we have a deep seated infection. He has also endosalmitis or osteomyelitis. But if you have uncomplicated patient, which means there is no any signs of instability, right? Look to the organism you have. Look to the bug you are isolated. If one of the high resistant drug uh, uh, organism like candida or coagulative negative, gram negative bacilli or staph aureus, those need to be removed central line. No way. And tailor the treatment based on the organism or the cultures. For the candida, we have to treat after negative candida. For the coagulative slide, between 10 to 2 weeks would be according to the clinical situation, as well as the aureus also, but keep in your mind with the infective endocarditis for such case. You have to do with echo, on this examination, and treatment can reach to the 4 to 6 weeks. But if you have a patient who is uncomplicated, with coagulative negative staph or enterococci, like our patient in the previous scenario, those patients is uncomplicated, coagulative negative staph, you can remove the catheter if you don't need it, and it is just for 75 days. But if you cannot remove the catheter for difficult access, you can keep it and it is for two weeks. Right? So this is our patient. So keep in your mind, Removal of the caster is very crucial. You have to keep the standard. Yes, remove. But in certain situations, you have to be more smart in dealing with such cases, especially with the coagulative negative staff or low virus organism. Unfortunately, there is no evidence to support high risk patient removal versus non removal. Early caster removal has to be a priority. And in some circumstances, clinically, I'm facing even. With the, uh, now, now, right now, I have one patient in my ICU inside with the clipsella from, clipsella from the central line, and he has difficult access, very difficult access, and the platelet counts for him was five. Currently in my ICU, he's in my, my ICU now, five platelet counts for him due to sepsis. You see, we are treating, we have to remove the source, we did agree, but sometimes, very, very rare, you need to check, transfuse him, platelets, when we reach a little bit higher, we change the catheter. But it take from us one to two days to change, to change the catheter. So agree for the guideline, for the infection control precautions, but still you have some to have clinical sense in some situation. It's not the standard, by the way, but you have to weigh the risk and benefit. So by the end of my lecture, I will just give you, don't forget, right type for the right time for the right purpose. Don't use it if you don't need it and give it for right patient on the right time and remove it if you don't need it. And the second important message, of course, also prevention, it is more worthy than bound of cure. I'd like to thank you, and I hope the uh, target of this seminar is achieved sooner, inshallah, we might uh, rate in the, uh, all the MOH was done. Thank you, Dr. Ahanan. Thank you, all of you. Thank you so much, Dr. Ahmed. We have a question. Uh, how frequently central venous catheter? used for dialysis to be changed one year or more and what is the promise and emergent indication to remove it uh, second, second part to add, Dr. and what is the promise and emergent indication to remove it okay you see these two parts 
long term use of the uh, HD catheter, right? Of course, HD catheter, we are using Bernie cath, there is no specific time. Mostly, it could be stay for a year for the Bernie cath if not complicated. But if you have a patient with complications or any site infection and you have a many of those, has to be removed as early as you can after to have to insert it. As I told you earlier, in the selection of the cath, they are keeping chronic kidney disease patient or end stage disease patient in a specific category because it's very precious and their lines, their access are very precious, right? So whenever you can keep it for long term, once you have the patient who's expected to be on the long term therapy, shift him on the longer axis, uh, like permicath, like uh, for longer time, it can stay for uh, uh, a year unless complicated. For the removal, the algorithm is clear. For the removal of the cath, algorithm is clear. If uncomplicated, if complicated has to be removed, no way. If uncomplicated, according to the growth you are uh, you have, but generally you have to remove unless for example, like I said, for focus those. So patient, you can weigh the risk benefit from the removal if you don't have access. If you have access, you have to remove it. And I thank you for everyone.